welcome to Avalon by Nature. I'm Jo Avalon and tonight I'm joined by the delightful Sherilyn Darcy. Uh, she's a botanical explorer, florist, organic gardener, environmental artist, author and radio presenter. So please join me in welcoming Sherilyn to our studio. Yay! Hey Sherilyn! Hello! <laughs> welcome, welcome. welcome. Oh, it's this my pleasure. Great. I've been looking forward to it for ages. <laughs> This is really, really lovely. Isn't it great? Technology at its finest. And um, and I can be in my jammies. Isn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't find my, I mentioned the other day, I had some um, summer jammies that were actually, mm -hmm. um, they were melons jammies. So <laughs> they've long since gone. So I found, I don't know if you can see, but this is actually mm -hmm. like an, an, an over the top mm -hmm. and it's flowery. So I'm oh, wearing my, yes. my best flowery. <laughs> I'm glad you dressed for the occasion. I did, I did. <laughs> so uh, um, firstly, I just want to acknowledge where we are for those mm -hmm. who are watching. Um, I'm on a Wabakal country uh, in my studio here in Bullaroo. And where are you tonight? Dark and Jung, that's right. Uh -huh. um, yep. <laughs> that's Lovely. it. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the elders past and present and emerging as well and First Nations people and also uh, of the lands of the people that are joining us tonight too. Cool. Welcome. We've got some people online, so welcome, everybody. Um, so last time we got together, Sherilyn, it was to celebrate the launch of your Green Witch Oracle. Hang on, let's get the light right. There we go. Your beautiful Green Witch Oracle. Yes. And um, that has become a number one seller on Amazon. So how exciting was that? Very exciting and unexpected. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, because it's a long time in making these creations. It's yeah. one was really long. That well, they're all long. That one was probably, I'm just trying to think. So I started with the idea 2013. So all together to get it all together, it was probably that long, you know, seven years of getting together. Wow. And then by the time you hand it over to the publisher and designers come in and help and the art and, you know, I do the art and all those things, it, it's quite a long time between when you actually finish it, give it to the publisher, yeah. and then you see the finished um, product, as it were, that's out there. And in the meantime, you know, I'm working on other things as well that are coming out that you'll all see in the next couple of years coming forward, going forward. So, yeah, between that, you're not sort of thinking when you finish, you're not sort of thinking, and now what happens? It kind of goes on the back burner a little bit. So yeah. it was a huge surprise. Yeah, it's sold out, as you know, as thank, thank you. I thank did. you. <laughs> it was one of my... It was one of my um, favorite uh sellers as well it sold out in a week everywhere and yeah. there was a couple of really uh, there was a couple of big uh stores as well that just went and bought, bought lots of them and i'm very grateful for that because there was a lot printed <laughs> i've had that like how many I imagine we talk about it, it was the the top end of what gets printed for decks because my things had gotten popular and there was they'd made a number that they were going to print and then uh big w jumped on and said they wanted a, a quite a large order and then america wanted lots as well so they actually increased it to the top yeah. top end and it still sold out now I know because it's. I, I was joking with my publisher actually this morning that it's a full time job answering the emails and messages from people. And I can show you on my phone at eleven thirty last night Australian time. I got a, a phone call from a frantic woman in England. Who just, <laughs> How did she get your number? <laughs> and I was like, my goodness. Okay, and that's so lovely. I'm I, I'm so glad that so many people are starting to connect deeper with plants, especially spiritually. So uh, yeah, that was fantastic, and it and so oh, it's it's out again now the second print as well. So um, thank you everyone for making that successful, and thank you Joe for uh, stocking it as well because you you've been with me through thick and thin. So and I love your support, especially of Australian <laughs> authors and artists as well. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to say hello to a few people who've popped in. So hi Sherry and Natalie and Jenny and Doc Shine. It's welcome. Uh, lovely to have you oh, come in you? and join us today. Day. Yes, there. I think there are some more there, but those are the ones who've said hello already. And uh, okay. Sherry, Sherry, who's been following both of us for a few days, uh, ah. a, few, a few months and months. Hey, Donna, um, just said wow, wow about you know just the the, the amount that you've been able to yeah. To, you know, 
uh, to sell to sell to sell out no, not to sell out to to well it is isn't it <laughs> there's two meanings of sell out and it's just like awkward <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not being rude to you i'm not no, actually no, no. I'm not she's friends. sharing I'm She's sharing this is happening <laughs> online. So there's no there's no manager or, or minions running around here. There's a couple of dogs, but that's it. So uh, that was, that was useless. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So I'll just share us around because people people say to me, Oh, you didn't tell you didn't tell us it was happening. Yeah. So there we go. I'm telling everybody it's happening now. So that's uh there we go. I've done it now. I've done so my job. There we go. This is, thanks, Cheryl, and that's awesome because I'm just busy talking to you. <laughs> I've done the sharing, so we'll do the best okay, we can. Yeah. But we've had a few people say, I've seen on your posts and other posts as well, people saying that that's one of their favourite decks. And, in fact, Doc Shine has just mentioned now that it's one of um, their favourite decks as well. So, see, there you go. Can you see that? So, I, you know, it's just lovely. It's really, yeah. Thank you. It's Thank just, you. Um, I guess, hit a, like, like you say, hit a real nerve. And I guess the timing of it was probably pretty awesome in the sense of um, yeah. Yeah, everybody... Yeah being obliged to stay at home more and then kind of you know looking into things they hadn't had time to look at before and yeah. now so now we're talking about yeah. your new language well hang on well, i'm looking language for it flowers <laughs> da -da -da! <laughs> the language of um, flowers are cool. yeah, so that's, that's the purpose of us gathering tonight is um and i guess too when you talk about um it there being such a long time between you creating and writing and editing and and all of that sort of stuff and then you give it over to other people who are going to work on it and polish it up and then all of a sudden uh there's a release date and you didn't even notice the release date <laughs> no i didn't yeah i didn't i'm sorry, actually reminded <laughs> Sherilyn, it's like, released. I said, like, we're getting released. And Jay's like, I've got it. Like, it's released. I was like, ah, <laughs> there we go. There we go. So uh, the story behind the language of flowers oracle is when, and I'm going to show you this. So hang on. I, I forgot to get something. So I'm just getting something off my little perch from up here. And this is the good thing about doing it at home, isn't it? You're able to just race <laughs> off, grab whatever from your shelf and come back. <laughs> here I am again. So yep. some of you maybe have this deck. Oh my gosh, oh, mine yeah. is it all at the front, doesn't it? There we go. So oh. some of you might have this one, the flower um, reading cards. And so yeah. this deck here, well, most of my artwork um, and stuff that in the future as well is done with block print. So it's carving onto wooden blocks or lino blocks, all different sorts of things to create my artwork. So when I created this, and this is something, this this sold pretty well, pretty solidly, but it wasn't yeah. a runaway success. Oh, I am sorry about that. But this is my swampies. Those of you who know that um, I work at a community garden as well, so we've got a lot of things happening today. And they're, they're having a conversation. And I'm like, oh, really? oh, and it's going ping, ping, ping. <laughs> I'm ping, 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 ping everywhere. Um, and I'm not part of that. I know I'm busy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this one did pretty well. <laughs> and yeah. uh, my publishers and I decided to bring it out again and give it a second a second chance, as it were, just to um, – this is a 36-card Oracle deck, and there was only one, one edition uh, printed of it. It did okay, but not as good as uh, we thought. And that came out in 2014, so quite a long time ago as well. Yeah. And I wanted to see it reprinted, but we talked about um, just redoing it a little bit. So if you do have it, you're not getting like double up, don't worry, because the <laughs> beauty of the lino print <laughs> yes. is that it's a black and white uh, a print and then I paint it. That's what I do. So we've got this is the old deck and it's painted in quite bright sort of, oh, gosh, that camera thing, isn't it? It's like back the front. It's like <laughs> looking at things in a weird thing. So they're quite yeah. bright colours. It is out of print now, so you can't get that one anymore. I don't know if it's coming back into print. And the reason I say that is because, thank you, Greenwich Oracle Buyers, you've made all of my work popular because um, – I think a lot of people, maybe not all the people who follow you, Joe, but a lot of people didn't realise that that's all I do. I, I've done, I think it's 18 titles are out now, books and decks, and I just do plants and gardening. I don't do anything else. So you fall in love with the Greenwich Oracle, which is uh, all the plants from the garden and gardening tips and all that sort of thing. And, well, that's what I do. So people are like, oh, what these other things? And uh, so that's yeah. all gone now. Anyway, back to this. So... Yeah. These are the same lino. Oh, 
gosh. It I'm takes so time to get used to that. So that's all right. Oh, what I might do while you're talking, I'm just going to see if I can make you bigger and me smaller because, no, oh, that's not going to work. Small. Hang on a minute. Like be the same size. Or do you want me to go like that? No, no, no. Uh, actually, all right, I'll get some feedback from the audience. <laughs> what do you yeah, you keep talking, Sherilyn, and um, if you can give me a couple of feedback, guys, and so um, to see what works best, yeah. So these are the same block prints but painted in a different way. So they have a completely different look about them. They have a more ethereal look. I, I painted them in a different way. That one's upside down. There you go. Don't take anything to it. I don't read reversals, so there you go. Flowers don't really do reversals. So they're just painted in a different way. They have different tones. I'm gone. <laughs> okay. Right. I added an extra. <laughs> I added an extra eight cards as well. So um, that's what I did too. So they're just a, a different um, a tone to them. I'll go through the whole lot of them and then the book, because Rockpool do their books a bit different now. So and this is you know I got in trouble a bit because I wanted to make it bigger. It's a bigger book, <laughs> um, and there's more expanded. It's it's an oh, yeah. like an expanded gardening section for each of them. So there was one before, but now it's more expanded as yeah. well. Uh, so that's the nice oh, the papers. The books are so cute as little books. I want to put them on the bookshelf. They're so cute. Okay, so this is the first time I've actually shared my deck online as well. So this is like an, a world exclusive. Oh my gosh, I'm so hopeless. Sorry, Joe. No, like, no, you're fine. I know I've got to go that look like that. So yep, this is I'm doing a whole oh, reveal of all the cards. Here they are. So with all these, I have carved them out of blocks. These are wood block prints. And that's why they're really quite uh what's the word word naive you'll see lino prints that are really like the lines are really perfect and almost photographic and some people do wood block prints like that as well but i use old recycled pieces of wood and so great big things pop out of them you love my magical oh my herb oracle thank you <laughs> that's true there's another one as well <laughs> yes um and that's what happens with these. Now, the reason I love working in block print too with a lot of these decks is that while I sketch them out, I'm looking at the lines. When I carve them out, I'm exploring the lines as well. And then this organic kind of thing happens when you print the black stuff. And I don't know if any of you've done lino print at school. It's just like the old-fashioned lino print, but I do it with um, with blocks and things like that. And, uh, oh, I've done a class with the... The rubber yeah. blocks. So what, what you're saying is, so what you're saying, because that class was with Lino, wasn't it? That yeah, was with Lino. Think, yeah. That was with Lino, and I remember doing that at school as well. But what you're yeah, saying is that you actually do them out of the wood, old wood. So mm -hmm. that's why it's like it's quite organic and sort of block, you know, mm -hmm. it all out. You know, it's it's not precise as what we did in that class. This is really, mm -hmm. yeah, this is like banging things out. It's a it's a a little process that I do. Yeah. yeah, on the backs because everyone likes to see the backs. So they're the backs. I like pattern backs. So it's a nice sort of, you know, petals and all that back. So, yeah. So it just looks like when it's all down, like a whole thing of like petals. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. What's I the like back? I can't remember. I remember talking about it when I was looking at the backs. But the back, that was the French penny, wasn't it? Oh, that was the old one. Yeah. So that's, you see, I wasn't a big fan. It wasn't my decision. <laughs> when you're in traditional publishers, it's not always a, your decision. So yeah, it's all right. I, I'm not a big fan of like one card on the back. You know, that's my kind of like, I like yeah. patterns better. I just think it looks nicer when it's, yes. you know, yeah. it's all sort of down and you want to do um, random draws like that. Now, the yeah. other thing is that I do, whoa, with my cards, I, I do it with other people's cards too, but I love like looking through the cards face up and just picking up um, a card and then reading about it because it's like what I'm drawn to visually. So it's an intuitive pick. Because I'm right. drawn to flowers and plants and, and things like that. And when I notice them, because here's the thing, when people say, oh, well, here you go, and I just showed Joe this, I'm very proud of my lovely mauve rose of French. We need yeah. smell of vision, Sherilyn. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it's one of my old roses. 
old world, <laughs> old heritage roses. But the thing is, when we, you know, there's lots of roses around, plants around. Mm. When we're drawn to something and then we find out what it means and what it does and its history, we, um, you know, it gives us another layer. So it's not so mm. random what we see. So especially with nature type cards, I like to. <laughs> Got to be a minute. She knows that. <laughs> I like to look at the actual, oh, yeah. mm. um, at the actual pictures, and then go. Oh, I feel really drawn to that. That that mm. plant, even though even though they're mine and I did them, I still do it. So I think it's a really good way. I was just going to ask you that actually, because even though they're yours and you know all of the meanings, um, obviously they're not in the forefront of your mind every moment of the day and um, particularly so when you're able to drop all of that out when you go to grab <laughs> choose a well, flower <laughs> yes, you know in nature as well when you see yeah. you know you see things and you see different shapes and things i see that in my cards as well i see there's the there's the, the flower that was used for the back see and that was just sort of uh, yes and yes. made it for like all yeah. the petals which is nice because it's all about wisdom the magnolia magnolia flowers they're um they're a really important flower, like they all are. It's an important plant. Well, you know how they're really thick? I'm sure everyone's seen a magnolia yes. flower. They're really, yeah. really thick leaves. Magnolia is, I think it's the only flower, well, yeah, it is the oldest flower that is still pretty much in its prehistoric form. Ah. So that's why it's about wisdom and it's about um matriarchal and patriarchal sort of energy mostly matriarchal though just because of the type of flower it is and the reason it has really really thick petals is so that it can support beetles you know back in the day back in back in way a time prehistoric times beetles and insects really big they were like the sizes of birds so they have to support the growth so next time you have to support them while they're getting pollinated so next time you look at a, a magnolia you'll see how thick and heavy the petals are so that yeah. it can that so when we look at the meaning it's about wisdom it's about family um um flowers even look at ah! oh sorry <laughs> sorry sorry, sorry. Go on. um they even look different at different times yes they do sherry they do absolutely they do the different well even with the light you know say you're going through the different times of the day you see you see different patterns and things like that with different light falling on it so you can almost see a face there maybe or two eyes or something i sort of think i can see that and then going up like that looks a bit different so sherry you're absolutely right so you're drawn that and what i'm saying is that that will draw you in that shape where the shape or the color or, or the tone of some other plant or leaf or tree will draw you in and it's usually that just energetic profile of it that that makes you want to sort of find out more about it as well so um, that's it now language of flowers based on loosely based on the victorian language of flowers which is loosely based on the doctrine of signatures which is what it is actually based on so i base all of my things on um, the doctrine of signatures which is used for aromatherapy herbal a lot of different herbal modalities as well so you can use all of those in the same thing so my some of these things are you know you can get aromatherapy products from uh, with them flower essences as well so there's meanings are the same victorian language of flowers was loosely based on that but um as i like to tell a story about which is not a story it's a fact <laughs> the language of flowers came to us from the various little books that were cre like, created in the victorian era in the european courts and they were a little code like a little dictionary about the flowers and their meanings and they'd found this from the middle eastern courts and it was brought uh, along to us and those little books were based on the doctrine of signature on herbal medicine however what happened was if there was a, a princess or a queen or a courtesan that was higher up than these these authors who say loved roses they wouldn't mean those mauve roses they weren't around them um, that's a hybridized color so if they love just say they love let's think of something like so they love daisies okay as you know the queen loved daisies love so daisies. these people who wrote these yeah that wrote these books would say mm, daisies mean that you're amazing and if you're a queen you know yep. <laughs> this is, because then the queen would be like oh this book's right because there were so many of them so yeah. it was a bit like a popularity contest who could get the most attention for the what they were writing 
and that's where and the, the meanings of the flowers. So when people say to me, oh, but I've read here, there, all these different places, different meanings, they all seem to contradict each other, you've got yeah. to go to the source. You've got to go back to the source. Um, yeah. Just picking, going to Google or picking up various uh, just sort of gift books, I suppose, some of them are better than others, they, they won't give you the whole answer. It's a, it's a lot of research of going back to the source, like where did the plant come from? And that's when I write my meanings in my books, every single thing I do. I go back to the source. Where did it come from? What did people use it for way back when it was sort of first became um, sort of around and used by humans as well? What did they yeah. think about? in their culture so ethnobotany is the study of people and plants and the relationship between the two it used to be just about it's true about um uh, the way uh, certain plants affected us in a semi-spiritual sort of uh they were used as hallucinogenics and things like that that mm. used to used to be what what it meant but these days it actually means everything so ethnobotany is how we eat plants, how we build things out of plants, the spiritual side of it, the medicine side as well. And you have to go, if you want to know what the meanings of plants are and what they're for, what they're used for and what they mean today, you need to go back to that original uh, mm. that time. So, and, and take yourself out of the equation. What you think about the plants is relevant to you, but it's not relevant to everybody else. And also you can fool yourself, you know, <laughs> that's the whole thing. It's like, um, you know, now I've got a good story about a tiger's eye, you know, I, I don't really like the stone, the crystal. I'm not a big crystal person, but, you know, I've never really liked it when people have said, oh, but it's the creator's stone, it's all these sorts of things. And then, that's the truth of it, but it's not the truth of it for me. But but I have to stand back and and I used to think right. This is years ago. Oh, tiger's eye. How can it be the create? You know, for creativity and all this. I don't believe it. I'm an artist. I don't believe it because I put myself in there. You know. So yeah. a lot of people will say to me, I don't believe that. You know, I don't feel like red roses have got anything to do with love. Well, actually, they're more about courage and being passionate. <laughs> but you know, they'll feel mm -hmm. like that. That's not what it means to me. Well, yeah, okay, that's not what it means to you, but that actually is indicative of that flower or that plant, yeah, its origin. You know, so yeah. that's yeah. yeah. If that makes kind of sense as well, Absolutely. and there's a lot of things written, and you can't discount what people feel and think about things. That's that's great. That's relevant as well. But you need to be very careful once you're then sharing that with other people, and also it doesn't help you if you completely just go this is what I think you know it doesn't help you at all to connect and find out more about plants and um and mm. what they could be telling you so once I found out about tigers I was like ah uh, yeah and and you know you um you've been involved with crystals and things you know you can, there's, there can be just as much Absolutely. about what you don't like and why you reject something even with plants okay as what yep. you're attracted to even if it sounds like it's something that you should be so yeah it's like there's something in that for everybody <laughs> mm. ah a lot of talking <laughs> <laughs> And that's all right. Well, have a sip and we'll see if anyone has any questions. I do have a question, but I'm going to wait because you may answer it. So I will wait. <laughs> um, yeah. So does anyone have any questions? Um, please feel free to just pop them in the little chat box. I can see that and I can share it with everyone and we can answer those questions. Um, it's lovely to have you come in, Kelly. Thank you. And Rachel as well. Um, and Kate. Hello, Kate. Um, going through your deck there. I one of the things that I really liked about this deck, and I remember liking it originally as well, and in fact, it was over that deck that you and I physically met, actually. You came into my shop at the entrance and because uh, you were bringing me the order. Yeah, you brought me I the order. I was with my mum, I think. Was I with I my mum? So. Oh, yeah, no, I think it was your daughter, actually. Oh, I my daughter. was with your daughter, yeah. And I remember you walked in the door and you went, oh, oh, this is much bigger than you led me to believe, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was a little shop in the entrance. <laughs> I didn't say it was a little shop. That's right. Yeah. I remember that. You went, you went oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Actually, I've got a really funny story. Uh, you know this, you know the story about what I told you. I don't know about. yet, so I'll start talking. <laughs> 
Oh, no, it's really funny. It's a really funny story. You just reminded me. I haven't thought of it for so long, and it was hilarious, okay? So <laughs> I think it was. Hopefully you'll all think it's funny too. So because this was a long time ago. This is probably 2014, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So at the entrance, there's, um, there's, oh yeah, because I wouldn't have been living living on the central coast. No, Coastal. you were in Sydney. Oh, still. I was living right. in Sydney. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, I went there, and there was another crystal shop there. Okay, and it was down the road, and I thought that was your shop, and I walked in, and there was a lady there, and she was, oh, I don't, know, she was like, <laughs> anyway, I know she, where this is going. You know the story, yeah, it's so cool. And I was with my husband, right? And it was like that was my second deck, my second thing ever. And and the first one was the Australian wildflower reading cards, which yeah. had, was really successful. So this is my second one, you know. And it just came out. So I walked in and I thought, oh, I don't this doesn't look like Joe's shop, no. And there's this woman sitting behind the counter and she just sort of looked at me. And I'd been to a couple of places where, you know, like if I looked at it or someone, you know, knew me, like you would say, Oh, Sherilyn, hi, that's great, mama, mama, whatever. Yeah. So this one, I just go, Oh, and she looks at me and goes, Can I help you? And I went, Oh, no, no. And I'm with my husband and I'm trying to impress him because he'd never sort of seen him <laughs> reaction, you know. And so these are sitting up there and I went, I went, oh, I'm the author and illustrator of that deck. And she, this is exactly what she did, everyone. She goes like this. She looks around. She goes, the flower one. And I went, yeah. And she goes, I can't sell them. Nobody wants them. And I just stood there and my husband burst out laughing and walked out of the shop. And I just stood there and went, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Bye, and walked away. Oh, <laughs> no, my goodness. I, so I mean, she was really gruff, you know. But it was, the thing was, I was like this, you know, like, <laughs> check this out. Let's check this out. And she just, and he just burst out. He's got a very loud laugh. And he just, and I just couldn't stop laughing as well. We walked down the entrance. We mustn't look like we were, people look at us. We were just laughing and laughing. And I just went, and he just said, Why well, you look like you were walking in there, like, you know, Kardashian or Paris Hilton or something? Like, here I am. <laughs> and, you know, it was like, way to knock me down off my, Absolutely. off the wall. Gosh. Anyway, so, um, yeah, listening humility and <laughs> but uh, and then I walked into your shop. That was like and you got the reaction you needed, so it was okay. <laughs> well, the reaction you deserved, brother. <laughs> I know it was so funny. Oh, that's funny. funny. That is oh, well. That's that's um disappointing. But anywho, but it was a moment. It was just my moment. It was. I'm not really like that anyway. But no, I know. <laughs> That was what was so funny. The one time that I acted like that because I just wanted to impress somebody. <laughs> anyway, so, so the number one rule is don't try and impress your own husband <laughs> or anybody. Yeah, real, anybody. Real. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, we do have a question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so I'll just pop it up so that you can see it, but I'll read it anyway. So what got you so beautifully connected in to studying herbs, flowers, and wanting to write about them? Where did your passion come from? Thanks, Dr. Okay, Shine. That's a beautiful question. That's an excellent question, and I like it. it question um okay so i was in my younger years i was brought up in the inner west in sydney and then my mum um remarried when i was 11 and it was brady bunch he had three kids mum had three kids <laughs> and, um we moved to the country uh we moved to Golgong to a hobby farm classic 25 acres and my dad my stepfather my he's my dad he yeah. is this German crazy inventor that I just adore. And he did, we had, so, like they were the grassroots people. We had solar power, mum baked everything. And, but even before that, mum loves gardening. Like she just, and vegetable gardening and herb gardening. And, you know, like we had all the herbs and things. And I remember she loved like Asian and Indian cooking and all that. And she'd grow all those uh, sorts of things. Wow. So, and mum's an artist as well. So that came from that. And she's also, um, my mother, um, my mother was a nurse too, and she's a spiritual person. She actually is a tarot reader. People say this, my mum's a tarot reader, but then if you if I go to Cairns, people are like, oh, you're Sherilyn, Galen's daughter, the tarot reader. It's like, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. It. Um, but uh, yeah, my mum, my mum's influenced my dad as well. You know, they're very, that grassroots uh, 
tree change sort of per people and that was back in the, the 70s so that's what my passion came from um, my parents definitely and then I've just I've, I've loved flowers uh, just all my life I've just I've really I just I just really like them and I don't see them as girly uh, at all like people have said that to me even when I first published things, I had a few other people going, oh, I don't really like flowers, they're girly, but I don't think of them like that. I've, I see them as very powerful. They're part of the, well, they are the reproductive system of plants. And psychologically, I find them fascinating because of their uh, their part in the reproduction of plants and the longevity of uh, different strains and, and heritage and all that sort of thing. So I'll go all botanical in a minute. I was trying to come down in lay terms, but I just I just find them just amazing. And yes. they're and the, actually the evolution just fascinates me. So that's the part. So um, doc, really the, the answer to that is I do love herbal medicine. I've studied uh, different mentalities and and also. Um, botany as well. Uh, I'm more fascinated by botanical history and botany. I seem to absorb that more. And of course, just gardening. I just, gardening is just something that I've just loved to do and uh, just, just, yeah, just love it. It's just, it, just what I do. That's what I say to people. It's not yeah. like this is something else. I mean, my whole life, Joe knows she's seen where I am and what I do. It's just, I don't know. It's hard to describe. If I had to, I always say if I had to give up um, things in my life, that's the one thing that I wouldn't give up, which is gardening. I could give up writing, like art even. I love art so much with a passion, but I could, if you said to me what was the one thing, I just couldn't stop gardening. I could do it. I do do it every day and, and do community gardening as well. So it did start from my childhood. Um, it's just, and, and I just feel so good being around plants in any way, shape or form. And I find... Um, I have got room for anything else. You know, publishers ask me to write different topics. I was asked to write uh, in the little, some of you might have the little spell book series and even the, the fairy yes. one is the, yes. the flower fairy. That's what it is. Yes. But, but for whatever, you know, you don't have uh, control over the names of things sometimes. So it actually is about uh, different fairies and uh, that are connected with flowers and plants as well around the world, but not like you would think as in, actually, I think I did do Tinkerbell as a bit of a laugh, but the rest are actually from legends and from folklore as well. I found it really fascinating how these stories of the Fae were used to describe the growing cycles of plants so that we could remember them. So that's that's yeah. something I love. So that that uh, the the fairy spell book is actually about that. If you read all the bits and pieces in it, so um, but I just don't have space in my heart or space in my life to write about other things at all. Um, and thank you for answering absolutely. Oh, that's okay, Doc. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thanks. I believe that they're coming out in a big volume too. They're putting them all together to be one oh, big. Oh, really? Book. Yeah, like a big hardcover. Oh, like an omnibus. Mm, is it he saying that omnibus. omnibus yeah yeah oh yeah they're toying around with the name of it at the moment oh, really? so I'm, you know i like i like big books i like, big, I, like <laughs> That's big hard cover book. I think they're just lovely they've got a kind of nice almost leathery feel to the books and they're kind of that sort of like um yeah crinkled corner leather look you know they're they're really lovely i i just like yeah. i just like having the display on my shelf don't, don't buy them because i just like them. no come I and like buy them I'll, I'll just know what i'm all about i like this sort of old-fashioned that's my sort of thing like whether and that's why I like in my journals and all that sort of thing that's what i um that's what I, I I really 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 I'm looking over there because I I use up all my old palettes and things to paint the backs of my journal. I'm just going to show you because I they just I can do this. It's like I can just show you. I was going to take the computer over, but no, no, I won't do that. No, no, because you just oh, upset the apple yeah. cart and all the rest of it. I, I will. I will. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Is there a question? No, no, no. Um, we, uh, Doc was just saying as soon as that comes out, let us know. But this is another comment. Ah, right. Oh, it's yes. my mum. I was wondering. <laughs> Hello. It's <laughs> <Hello. laughs> because I mentioned her. It's like, yeah, that's right. I mentioned yeah, her that's on right. the phone. <laughs> <and, and, laughs> like, oh, she's probably going, yeah, that's right. I taught you everything, everything you know. <laughs> um, I was like, hi, mum. Well, with this sort of lockdowns and everything, I can't go and see my mum because she's up in Cairns. So it's nice that she can see me tonight. <laughs> I love this. 
Um, so I use all my old palettes to paint the back, the things of um, my journals because and because I think it makes them look old. So hang on, I'm just going to go grab my journal as well. Okay. Hang on, hopefully my pants are for her. <laughs> I do that. Have I written in this one? This is I've got journals all over the place. Look, I haven't even written in this one either. So, so back um, up a step. Sorry. Um, so, um, <clears throat> when you say you paint you you paint on your old palettes, I I had a different thing in mind. What do you mean by palette? Okay. So when I <laughs> so when I paint things, um, be they canvases, be they lino prints or whatever, it's um, I'll have a palette like a um, a plate or something where I've put all my paints out and mix them around. Oh, so of instead course. of chucking them out, I'll reactivate them with water. Here's me going, where's my journals? Oh, hang on, I've got one. And I'll reactivate them with water and I'll paint the pages. So yep. Oh my so you've got that, that colour palette there. Okay, yeah, I've, yes, seen, yes, I've seen my daughter doing that. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, so they look yes. so they look old. So I paint the background. So I don't even know why I bought that. Oh, because I was looking at them. That's right. Sorry. It's like oh, no, I know I know the train of thought. It was I was talking about how the spell books had that kind of leathery look and that sort of like yes. the, the and like then you said, Oh yes, I paint on the old palettes and, and this, that, and the other. So this is where all of my deck come from. Uh, they come from my yeah. journal. So um yeah. as I go as I go around doing things, I take notes in my journals and draw pictures and sometimes and I got one of those little camera things they, they're cool oh there it is see one of those little mini ca um wow. printers which oh I my like. goodness so sometimes I put little pictures in there and then I draw. yeah but I like drawing but sometimes for botanical sake to get things correct I like yeah. to take those, especially if they're things outside because I'm not Joseph Banks, even though I think I am. Um, <laughs> I just want to get correct details of things that I'm doing. And uh, give old Joe a run for his money, surely. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do like. Yeah. He's, a very, he's a very naughty individual and did a lot of things that weren't good. But um, yeah, so yeah, so that's so you recognise that from the deck. So uh, that's what I do. What I, I told you that. Remember the conversation we had. I'm like, I'd love to just. Oh, there's my potatoes. 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 Yeah. Um, I'd like to just like get those published, like the Frida Kahlo journals. Yay. <laughs> anyway, um, am I too close? No, 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 no. This was in relation to um, giving old Joe a run for his money. <laughs> oh, yes, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, like that. uh, that's right. So uh, that was interesting that you said that you have the, um, the little printer, the photo printer, because I have watched a couple of things where you've been drawing and you know sketching the plant and stuff and mm -hmm. whenever I see your pictures of your journals and you've got these beautiful drawings and all this really lovely neat writing and all that sort of stuff and I know and I, it, it looks neat because it's all finished right but I my first fleeting thought is how does she have the time to sit there and you know draw it out in the moment and I guess part of that is that you've taken you've been able to take a photo I mean what in some instances you would take a photo and there's your record and you can work from that or in other instances you might do a quick sketch and, and well I always do a quick sketch that's what I do so you're right Joe I always do a quick sketch and then I'll take a photo sometimes I just do it from my head you know because I'm I'm out there all the time in my own garden so I'm doing the capsicum at the moment I've got a little capsicum he's, he's sort of oh, my, along early and uh yeah I yeah I kind of just do it from that so but yeah little little pictures and things as well or yeah I don't don't really sit out there that long and do it as well I do it a lot how do I choose your plants to use uh, do you mean sherry in the decks is that what you mean I think so because that was a question I had too. So I'm going to assume that Sherry means that too. All right. Okay. So <laughs> and I'm if not, we can change. <laughs> because yeah. um, some of you probably follow me on Facebook as well. You might have seen my dramatic post tonight saying, you know, I have to take the week off. So I'm actually right in the end of finishing a manuscript um, and I finished the artwork. Actually, I have two to do. When I get off tonight, I'm finishing, I'm going to start very late that's why I'm drinking coffee at this time of night and I'm going to finish the two pieces of artwork and then I'm going to get on to the, um, to the book. I mean, I've already started the book, but I've got to finish it and I've got to finish it this week uh, to go to print. So how I, how I pick the plants is that I look at the deck as a whole and what the deck is going to do as a whole, what the theme of the deck is. So, um, 
this one that's coming up does have a definite theme. And well, they all do, but I look at sort of the shadow and the light, and I look at the different things that you'd want to know in a reading as well. So I don't just go, these are my favorite plants and I'm going to throw them all together. And that's why sometimes it mightn't make sense when you first look at it. And people have said this to me, I mean, make sense. They go, there's no peony. Well, there is a peony in here, but just say, there's no peony in this deck or there's no this in this deck. Why not? That's that's a more popular plant. Uh, that's not what it's, it's not the, the the deck of popular plants. I'm sure somebody <laughs> could do that. <laughs> So I go through and I say, what would make a really good deck for this type of theme and what I want to put together for this? A really good example, and I'm not making an advertisement, I know it's not out of print. Actually, I think it came back into print today, is Flowers of the Night Oracle. So mm. Flowers of the Night Oracle that I did, uh, I had a definite thing. It was about uh, coming from the dark to the light, seeing things in the dark that are uh, that are still worthy and that you want to bring forth. So I looked at, and this is why my decks take so long and probably my publishers are like, hurry up, because <laughs> I don't just pick my favourite plants and throw them together. I, I look at well, what's going to make a workable tool for people to use. So um, with the Language of Flowers Oracle, let's go back to that. I've gone through it and found I wanted to make sure that when you're reading it, you had uh, plants that would make you remind you to be courageous and step up healing we need healing in there because if that's going to come up in a question you're going to be asking about what do i need to do to change a situation do i need to heal it do i need to have more courage do i need um to find a mentor do i need to to learn something so i need those meanings so i'm finding the meanings first sherry and then i'm finding the plants to match it so i'll actually go through a list and go these are the things that i want I, I can't really say, I, I'm almost wanting to say what this next deck, this next deck is something that, that and people always go, this is really different. No one's done it before. Well, they, they kind of, they haven't actually. <laughs> and it's a plant deck. And um, so, yeah, so I go, this is all the meanings I want for this deck because this is the theme of the deck. Now I will find the plants that will go with that. Not necessarily the most popular um, at all. So it, it's what's going to, to, to make, and then I'll balance it out. And, you know, I'll have, lots more than I want and then I'll I'll whittle down to yeah. where it's going to be so and I'll know that before I start writing as well mm. so mm. before I start so I'll know the keywords and I'll know the plants that I'm going to put in it I might know the exact species but I do know you know say if it's a rose it'll be a rose but I, I, I won't know you know is it whatever species it is or a daisy whatever because then as I'm writing so I won't actually create the artwork but I'll just know that what it is and then while I'm writing it'll go mm, this actual one will suit that better because I want to talk about courage through adversity so this actual type of the species will be better and then I'll create the artwork and then I'll move on to the next one and then the other thing is I don't write the introduction until I'm completely finished because I don't really know because sometimes it'll drift away from the exact you know, I can't start with the introduction and go, hello, this is my deck about this. <laughs> it's like because I, I don't know, I haven't explored all those plants and I haven't put it all together, I haven't created all the artwork. So what I want to say about the deck won't come till the, to, to, to the end. The same as books. I've found yeah, that I was just going to say the same thing. You don't write the introduction first. Yeah. So Sherry oh, writes. Oh, goodness, yeah. goodness. No, no, no. There's a lot to think about. Yeah, yeah. It's it, There's a lot to it. Yeah, that's the exact thing. And I think um, um, I think the fact is that it comes together and just looks like a beautiful uh, deck. Thank you for saying that. And that it's easy to, to, to use. That's a testament to the hard work that goes in behind it. It should be easy for you to use and it should be seamless and you should be able to, you know, um, not have to really think too deeply. It should just lead you into the conversation of plants. That's what I hope happens. I I don't want it to be um, some difficult thing. I, I want it to be like a little bridge that, that people go, wow, this is great. Let me find out more. Absolutely, absolutely. A question I had was... Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, in this particular deck, you have um, the sacred place, yes. image, an image of the sacred place where that plant is found. Mm -hmm. But it's That's in right. the background. So obviously the plant itself, the flower is is the main theme, but mm -hmm. it's backed up by, by the, yes. the place that it's come from. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Yes. So these are all um, these are all plants that actually grow in these places. So it's a temple of Aphrodite there mm. with um, wild tulip. So all of these plants actually grow around these sacred places. And there you go, Sherry, you asked that question. Another huge thing to do to, to research as well. So um, these are, and are they just, that's a little uh, ruin, that's, uh, w which is where that is. That's, uh, this is Table Mountain in South Africa with uh, King Protea as well. Mm -hmm. So these are all, these are all sacred places. And these are the, the flowers that grow, that originate from these places. Now, what I found fascinating absolutely fascinating when i went through this because i thought it was a good idea and this was the original deck this was the yes. this thing yes. behind it and now it's expanded as well the most amazing thing and this is a really good example and it's the next card up for the thing was that the oh sorry so it's frangipani and that is in puerto rico and they're the ball courts uh the, which are actually old ball game courts in uh, Puerto Rico. So what I found time and time again, well, like with all of them, is that the meanings and energies of the plants really did speak of the area. Um, so this is this is all about freedom and fun. That's what frangipanis are about. And they originate sort of in this area where these ancient ball courts are, these ancient uh, ball courts. They're a really good one, and I know everyone will go, ah, oh, yeah, um, was, of course, uh, Stonehenge, <laughs> which is in here. And I, I absolutely love that because, you know, it's about unity. Um, oh, yeah, look, the English daisies, and that's the, the mm -hmm. you know, the, the tour that you West get into. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, protection you know it's about protection and looking out and sort of seeing yeah i was like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> same thing joe it was just like um rebirth yeah let's check it out the sacred lotus grows in the nile right near all of the pyramids, yeah, pyramids. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So these aren't things that i've i've made up oh no. yeah this is great so this is um this is an amazing uh, structure out in the deserts in uh, north america uh ship rock and these are wild sunflowers there, and it's so it's about strength, and that's what that area is, is uh, means to those uh, those people there as well, the um, First Nations people. And it's interesting. Sorry to interrupt you, but wild sunflowers, like when I go out west to the deserty areas, or well, not almost almost desert areas, that's where they're growing. They're growing wild on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. So that energy is sort of coming across in yes. the, in in the kind of like the transplanted places as well, I suppose. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, oh, yes, of course. You will see that happening. And, and you'll see that plants will grow naturally in places that are similar to where they come from. So those energies are similar as well. I mean, there's, oh, my goodness. I, you know, in the background here, I am forever doing other research like this. I mean, the, what I actually publish is a tip of the iceberg of the work that I that I do, the writing and the, the things I do and the people I get involved with sort of um, working these sorts of things out because ethnobotany is uh, something that we're pretty much divorced from because of our modern worlds because yeah. we we've moved we've hybridized so much um yeah. that's cross-breeding plants we've we import things everywhere so there's plants there's so many plants that we don't even know the origin of them so um thanks Kelly. <laughs> kelly sorry i was like i was about to say connection um thanks kelly the and it's true that it's so interesting to see that i mean dandelions you know the dandelion seed head we blow them or we make a wish and and that actual little uh, piece of folklore goes back to um wanting to spread the seeds so a lot of these little things like blow on the dandelion seed head and it will the fairies will give you a wish that's where it comes from because your help and the actual original thing was because you're helping them spread the seeds out now yeah. All of us modern people with our lawns go, we don't want dandelions. But way back when they wanted dandelions because it's a very important medicinal plant. So they wanted to spread them everywhere. So they'd have these little things. So, yep, come on, blow them, spread them around. We want these dandelions because we want to harvest them. Um, we've done it so often, though, because now botanists don't really know where dandelions 
originated. They, they're on every mm. continent except, you know, the, the polar caps <laughs> and Antarctica. <laughs> right, and the icy everywhere. places. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we just don't know where they originated because we've done that so often. And there's a lot of plants like that. And that's just, and also this is because, not just because we're blowing dandelions, but because we're hybridising, we're shifting things around. So it's hard to know exactly where things have come from. But energetically, you can you still get a connection with land. Sorry, everybody, <laughs> I had a big day today. That's all right. I wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's exactly right. Dandelion root tea is very, very good for you. It is. It's it's better than coffee. I should be probably drinking that, but I'm trying to keep myself up. <laughs> so naughty. Uh, I'm no perfect plant goddess, so please don't think that. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the the, plan, the connection with the energy and the land and people is really important. So that brings us back again to why it's so important to look at origins, to look at folklore, to look at uh, medicinal use and cultural uses of plants uh, ethically and with respect, of course, uh, to find out what they mean. So it's not about just going, um, you know, here's this rose, Purple means, you know, uh, higher learning. So, yeah, this rose means, you know, connection with higher self. Well, that's what you think you know? <laughs> because you're looking at colour and things, but there are so many other things. There's, it's, it's botanical history. It's, uh, it's it's original environment and particularly something that's hybridised. Yes, it does have an energy. It's weaker than the than, um, species plants, original species plants, and ones found in the wild as well, even though it's gorgeous. I'm smiling at it. It's like, you're beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a lot of work in the stuff that I do, but, you know, I, more people should be doing it, that's for sure, but mm -hmm. it, it is a passion. It's a it's a deep passion, and um, um, but it's, but, yeah, I like to share my work, and there's other people that share similar work as well, and, as I always say, I'm part of a conversation. That's it. A big, maybe, maybe a crazy you know, <laughs> part of this, uh, um, conversation. Well, not that crazy. I mean, you're part of really practical projects as well. I mean, the swamp project down at um, uh, Tacoma, there, Tacoma, ah, um, yeah, and yeah. and other community gardens. Um, when you were just talking about hybrids, if any of my swampy people are, because I'm so passionate that I was a bit naughty and said something about. Someone says the wrong. Yep, yeah, I was just. I'm not going to say anymore. I was too passionate, and I was like, "We need to do this or that." And it's like, "I need to." Yeah, I'm the garden. I'm the. I'm, I've got to be really good. Um, that's my. That's my political eco warrior self going oh, on. No. Oh, oh look, we all have no, moments no, no. like those where we think, "Oops, should not have said that. Should not have um, said that." <laughs> <laughs> and seed saver groups and then permaculture groups. Um, not to say that you're yes. involved in all of those, but those are all I part am. of that large <laughs> conversation. Oh, you are. <laughs> um, but they, that's that's that. They're all facets of that conversation about plants. I and, think, and yeah, I, I look personally. I find that working with um, community gardens and this one at Swamp that you mentioned. I'm the garden curator, so that's the person that I've designed the gardens. I decide on what gets planted. I mean, we all talk about it, but yeah. I have, you know, I'm part of that that whole thing, garden education, teaching other people how to garden as well. So that's um, it's a huge it's a huge job. It's a, it's a fun job as well. But being able to study plants. Share the information with other people as well. I have to, you have to be hands on, you know. I make, mm -hmm. I do my own gardening, but also I get out there and in the community as a community gardener because I just, it, it and it just boosts, it boosts the energy and it actually makes what I do um, just spread out a bit more as well. But uh, yeah. yeah, all those sorts of things, permaculture groups, seeds, so, so, but anybody, the thing is as well, I think a lot of people think you have to be a full-on gardener to be involved in these projects, but you don't. You don't. Um, even I did a project years ago, and it was fun. Um, the Museum of um, a Museum of Australia in Sydney. They actually have a program where you, this is so cool, you actually read old labels of like plants and things and you don't have to have any, 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 any experience or even no gardening or Latin or anything. And because they're all handwritten, to the best of your ability, you just write them out, type them out so that then botanists afterwards can look at them and go, oh, that actually means this and redo them from old specimens. And they give you all the pictures and things. Of, it's 
fascinating work and it's a voluntary yeah. thing you can do it at home there's so many things you can do like that that, yeah. that enable you to be part of the conversation and yeah. you know being part of a community garden or even I would say just growing things yourself, you know, at, by yourself uh, yeah. and learning and uh, pop, it can be pot plants. You don't have to have a great big garden or anything like that. Yes, so. and that is uh, my first, like my mum was a, is a gardener. She's always been a gardener. Um, but when I moved into a place by myself, I didn't have space. So mm -hmm. I pot plant gardened and, you know, the yeah. old um, styrofoam veggie pots. <laughs> I grew all sorts of things in the virus styrofoam veggies. But um, can I just do a quick, um, it's not a plug so much, but I just wanted to say this is what I found on my um, supplier. Wow. It's actually, I'm just going to read the front, sorry. So it's the oldest foods on earth, a history of Australian native foods with um, recipes. How cool is that? Brilliant. Australian native Brilliant. foods. Yeah. And then... This is another one. This is the second one, the oldest foods on earth. So more um, recipes and okay, cool. sources. I haven't heard of that. No, I think they're fairly new. Um, so I'm, okay. um, yeah, 2019. I mean, that's still fairly new. Well, yeah, that's fairly <laughs> so new. That, yeah, yeah, it's a couple of years now. So wonderful. I like um, so this, is, I think, too, as people are um, asking questions and and. Um, there's such a big um, discussion about um, food security and where does our food come from and labelling, truth in labelling on our foods and, um, mm -hmm. gee, we've moved a long way from the language of flowers, Oracle. Um. <laughs> no, that's the next Because we say swap all the time, but it stands for Sustainable Wetlands, because we're on the wetlands, Sustainable Wetlands Agricultural Makers Project. So it's all about... Um, that's what it's about food security and it's about uh you know looking after the environment while you do that as well and you know where we're a link between those things and a lot of community gardens are, are sort of stepping up to that i mean in our area there's carry on eco garden they do that's the sort of work they do but most do they're very very involved in that and I think, you know, the, the pandemic has actually made people question those sorts of things. You know, they want yeah. to be healthier. They want to, you know, they've had more time to think about it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah it's, it's a really important uh, part of things. But, you know, um, it's, it's, not, it's not that far away from the language of flowers at all. You know, <laughs> we need flowers. We need flowers so that they can reproduce. That's the whole That's point. Right. The That's plant. Right. And that is a question people do ask. So I will um, answer this before you start, before anyone asks or they'll go away thinking about it, they always say, um, you know, some of these uh, decks or books or things I say talk about the language or the meaning of a plant and you talk about the flower, is it any different? It's no different. It's 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 no different. The, you know, if this is the meaning of pyramidal orchid, that means the whole plant, not just the flower, okay? Uh, so, okay. so there's no separate the meaning for the stem or for the leaf or the root or anything. It's for the entire plant. No. It's just that we happen <laughs> to recognise it by the flower exactly and then mm. you look at plants as well i mean there'll be you can i mean you could, could sort of you know have a subtle sort of you know oh, this is the opening or the beginning i mean that's getting you know getting right into the sort of uh, minisca of it i don't know if it's that you know minisca of it. i don't know if it's that important at, at, with that sort of work with cards and things and uh like i think it was doc said before she likes dandelion root tea and there's different uses for different parts of the plant but overall, energetically, it's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much the same. There's no different meaning at all, mm. at all. Mm. So, oh, yeah, cool. I mean, the flowers are purple. <laughs> no, that's, that's definitely, definitely it, yeah. And pl the flowers just help us identify the plant, really, because yeah. to, to most of us, a lot of leaves, there's not that much difference to us, you know. I mean, there is a there is some. But really, if you show, um, say, this is a this is a rose leaf, ah, a rose leaf, and that's a rose thorn, you know, thorn. that... <laughs> I mean, there's lots of plants other than roses that have leaves that look like that. That's the bottom line. But when we look at the rose, we identify them. And there's an interesting study, and I can't think of it on the top of my head. I always come up with these little ethno botanical, botanical history things. There's an interesting psychological study that was made a few years ago, and you can go and look it up it's somewhere. And it said that people who say that they hate flowers are either, they, they figured out, are either liars or psychopaths. Okay, so you can choose which one you want. Because um, 
we had to like flowers, okay? We had to like them. We had to actually be very, very attracted to them, the hunter gatherers in us, because we'd have, that's what we would know. When the flowers came, we knew different plants when the fruits would come that we could eat so we could survive. That's the whole point of it. So we're actually made so that we, we have, that we, attracted to different flowers and to recognize them as food source plants as well to recognize the seasons and because we're for we were foragers and so we used to be hunter gatherers and walking around we remember through the scent and through being attracted to it that oh we're going to come back to that apple tree or we're going to come back to that whatever it is you know or the the yeah. vine that we see because we remember that's how we remember things and you gotta you gotta remember that scent is actually yes triggered to our memory and that's why it's triggered to our memory so that we remember the smells of things that are good to eat that's yeah. it so when people yeah. say i absolutely hate flowers i detest them i can't stand them it's like okay well you might want to go and have a talk to someone about that <laughs> <laughs> and I, usually, when I tell that story people go Okay, well, I don't really hate them. <laughs> <It's> just, <yeah. laughs> I'm just being dramatic, just for entertainment. I'm, I'm just <laughs> girly, you know. But but then again, maybe you're not a psychopath. You, um, you, you maybe you're not a psychopath. You just we, we become, as I keep saying, divorced from nature. You know, maybe yes. yeah. maybe you have just been the person who feels like that. You just haven't been around them. You know, you just maybe you need to have more flowers around so that you get that feeling. But I do get that. You know the supermarket flowers the ones that have been you know sprayed with a thousand pesticides wrapped up in plastic sitting there you know they probably you probably don't like them they probably have developed some sort of a detest for them because they're like oh you know they don't feel natural and mm. um yeah that's the thing oh sorry oh what happened there i just went to send someone an email i don't want to send anybody an email no I you're just still with us though don't worry <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where appropriate. Ha ha. Ayahuasca. Is that what you're saying, Kelly? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Um, do I think, do I think it's, oh, look, do I think it helps embody them? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cultural practices that that's what they do. Okay, like the ayahuasca um, traditions as well. Do I think it's necessary to do it? For me, no. I think it's a personal thing. I've never felt the need to, but then again, I'm completely immersed in plants. <laughs> you know, yeah. my whole, you know, that's it. I, I get up, I go to the community garden two days, two full da days a week, and that's what I'm doing. I'm also writing about plants today. I've, I've written my newspaper um, gardening page today. I've been went and interviewed someone about their garden as well for my radio show. Walked around their garden. Uh, I came back, did my own gardening as well, and I've been sitting here with. I, I cut that rose and I sat here, and then I've also cooked with some my spinach and uh, made something really nice. Yeah, I'm just immersed in the plants. Um, yeah, I you know, and I've eaten spinach as well. Also, there's a great connection to, between different types of plants or si similar plants as well. So, you know, you're still getting that connection. A beautiful book to read is, um, it's about trees. It's by a German, um, I'm trying to think, The Secret Meaning of Trees or The Six Something Secret, something about trees, I'll find it. So Joe can talk about it. So I'm just going to go, is it just behind me? No. <laughs> Would you be that lucky? <laughs> He just wrote he just wrote a walk in the woods it's really bad oh, being an author and keeps so i always go i can't remember that author's name and i always think afterwards that's really horrible because i'm an author <laughs> it's like no, anyway um peter and then it starts with a w whoa something anyway um she can, i remember out the secret life of trees or the secret yeah. lives of or something like that anyway he talked about that connection uh energetically uh through the root system and uh also just through them being together and and uh knowing when to flower to drop seeds and and pods and all that sort of thing and also he feels he's witnessed how you know eating something from one sort of tree is energetically sort of similar to another one so yeah there's that as well. Do I think that I need to take um, hallucinogenic plants or something to be closer to them? No. Um, I, I like, the, I go the Bill Clinton. Um, is it Bill Clinton or whoever said it that they they smoked marijuana once and then, you know, um, I've tried it twice and both times I threw up. So I don't know. Oh, <laughs> maybe on two. I maybe did on two. Did you? Yeah, I just really I, I was pregnant at the time it turned out. Oh. <laughs> I know, and I was in Denver. My body was smarter than my head. Oh, my God. And I was in Denver a couple of years for a, um, 
yeah, I was a speaker at a, it was actually like a mind, body, spirit convention thing. Um, I trade, trade fair. And and it's legal there and it was everywhere. And other people were like, oh, you can have it when you're here. And all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I could. <laughs> Except I'm not be sick. So I was like, oh, party pooper. So, um, <laughs> so oh, well, someone else can have it. You're not wasting it. <laughs> no, and I was there and I was like, I'm, I was like the herb person and the plant person. Like everyone just assumed, you know, oh, for sure, you know. And I was like, a consumer of one as well but it's an interesting question like as I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of Kelly's question in terms of say spell work because um, Doc mm -hmm. also mentioned um, that she really loved the spells that you have in your books your spell books as well mm -hmm. and and so I'm I'm just sort of thinking perhaps the question could also be looking at is it necessary to eat the herbs to embody the energy of that when you're doing a spell perhaps no. okay so and with with um, respect as well, because this isn't my story, but research has shown me that uh, many, many people throughout Australian uh, Indigenous uh, peoples believe that sitting, just sitting next to a uh, plant or tree actually uh, gives them the energy. Uh, a lot of the peoples in New South Wales region, what we call New South Wales regions, believe that sitting near waratahs or gaimere lilies because it's like a big spear the waratah is this bright red flower in the dark bush when you find it they believe that that gives them the strength of a warrior they don't need to eat it they don't need to smoke it they don't need to drink anything off or anything they just sit with it that's it and they believe that energy is transferred by that quietness and stillness and uh, observation as well so it's nothing um you know, it's a, it's it, the oldest people on earth. They, they're the oldest tradition. Mm -hmm. That's how they believe. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of them as well. So, um, not necessarily so. I don't think so. So, and and that really also brings us to flower essences. Flower essences are just you know the energy that is transferred through the water. You know, you're not actually drinking. Um, particles of a flower to to you know uh, embody that energy at all. So, you know, that's the other thing. I mean, by the time you make a stock and then which is, you know, what is that one thirtieth of a part and then you pontalize that down to something, same as homeopathics, you, you, there's no actual discernible matter that you're actually consuming. You're, you're really on an energetic uh, field. So, yeah, no, the answer's all that. The answer's no, I don't mm -hmm. <laughs> at all. So, yeah. And Sherry's asking, can you bathe them in them? Bathe yeah, in flowers. Yeah course yeah yeah you can but always be careful because uh even if something is uh you know not toxic you could still have an allergy to things as well mm -hmm. and be careful about burning things where something might be okay to um consume or use topically as well burning it could be toxic you need to check all these things out and not just the type but the species it's not very well to say you know daisies there's so many different types of daisies as daisies are actually different species as well they're just known as daisies because they're daisy like shapes so you really need to make sure you identify things by their latin name that's why everything i write about everything that i show you that i talk about I've got the Latin name. So if you want to use it for something, it's, you know, um, you can look it up just to be doubly sure with things and uh, do allergy tests if you, if you, um, I know you should do an allergy test if you're going to use it for something particularly, but I was just thinking, and also flowers and plants, like we just talked about floristry things, unless you're getting things from an organic florist, do not make anything to eat, put on your skin, burn make flower essences even um just don't i worked in well i've trained in the floristry industry and uh yeah <laughs> it's like they spray things with um particularly roses they're heavily heavily sprayed most of them come uh from south america and they're heavily sprayed with in, not only insecticides but also with sterilization um formulations because they don't want anyone to take cuttings of the roses and grow yeah. them so and you don't want that in anything you don't actually want them at all so uh, we're lucky yeah. joe because we live in a um central coast grows lots of organic roses and different farms yeah. and that enormous, and it's easy to grow them yeah. here as well but you need there are lots of organic florists popping up everywhere which is fantastic and uh and even plant goods there's a lot of things you can get from um 
Um, oh, the guy Mia Lily used to live inside. Oh, okay. Well, tell you about the. I'll tell you about the guy Mia Lily. <laughs> so you know how they, you know how they're all flowering soon. I love yeah. this story. So anyway, and this was told to me. It was actually told to me by um, some Gringal people, but that um, that's not their story. So this isn't my story to tell. So I'm just relating it as well, out of respect for the people of that area as well. So the area in Sydney known as Guy Amelia is uh, where the Guy Amelia Lily comes from, and the peoples of that area would know when it was time to go fishing on the coast because the whales would be going up the coast because the guy Milly guy Mia Lily would flower so with the big red things and to them so this is this this language of flowers as well isn't this great it's like a big circle we didn't plant you for this question either did we so they would sit <laughs> and the, the, one, the guy Mia Lily go and have a look at it if you don't know what that 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 looks like is it in this one oh no it's on oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> Funny. It's like, it's I think like, you've oh, had enough coffee, Sherilyn. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, my wall. There you go. So that's ah, actually yes. that's the there original from the Australian wildlife. So that's on a wow. really big spike. That's the original one. So, yeah, I've got a couple mm. on my wall. So, anyway, so it looks like that. See, see how it's like phew, all the petals? So, it mm. looks like the whale's spout, okay? Oh. So, when they saw the guy, Mia Lily, because they were up, up, up the river a bit where Guy Mia is, not, not down on the coast, back, back yes. further. So yeah. where they see that that happening, that would tell them that the whales were coming up the coast. So that meant the fish were following them. So they knew to go down to the coast to fish. That was the oh thing. Gosh. So I, I just love the story when I heard that. that I was like, what? That. And they said, if you want to know when, and this is so weird. Someone said to me the other day, it wasn't you, was it, Joe? No, someone said, oh, there's a few early humpback whales or something going up the coast at the moment. And I went, that's so weird. And then I went, I saw some guy in Mia Lilies the other day. Oh. And then, yeah, so it was like they seemed a bit early. So if you, I always say so now, you don't have to, yep, sorry. So the lilies had flowered a bit earlier, had they, than expected. And, well, and, and well, so the whales also came up the coast a bit earlier than expected. Yes. And then once you see when the guy Mia Lilies all die down, you see lots of them just die, they go, the whales, they're gone now. That's it. So you got to go. Back inland, Back everybody. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's, so it's kind of like your last chance to do, do it. It's just because the food sources at this time, because it's colder and that also, the food sources are going down. So it indicates to them, go to the coast, go. And so they go, when will we go? Because we don't want to go down there unless there's the fish. I yeah. found that just amazing about yeah. the guy in Billy. I was just like, yeah blown away so yeah but all parts of the guy Mia lily can be eaten as well it's the world's largest lily like true lily and um the indigenous people use uh, all parts of it like the roots the leaves uh the the you know the stems and, and actually because it's also called spear lily because yes they there's a, there's a bit of a thing about that. Some people say, some historians go, yeah, they use it as spears. Others go, no, no, it was just called that for, you know. So you have to, this is what happens, especially with such an old culture, a lot gets lost in um, in time as well with those things. But, yeah, love, God, love me a glide me a lily <laughs> and the story. So, Wild yeah. time. <laughs> so, yeah, that really and, shows you that, that uh, like that's not something that you would notice in one or two years time that's generations of knowing yes. and 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 oh here's a theory oh look we'll try it again next summer or next winter or whenever and and that's gone over and over and over tried and, and that, true and, that, mm. and and truly that's the language of flowers you know that they had to you know notice the flowers so it comes back to that again when i said you know flowers are really really important and and also to know that's that plant if you look at the bottom of a guy mere lily all those big strappy leaves i mean it could be you know whatever but it's you know it indicates to them that's where those guy mere lilies are because of those leaves i mean we can see that now when we're walking yes. around we can yeah. because there's not that much built up but you know when you go into the deeper um forests and things like that around new south wales where they where they grow as well it might be hard to find that base of the guy mere lily but if you see that flower come up you would go okay there's a whole stand of them over there you know near near that gum tree there you know you would remember as well so um yes, yes. it is it's very very connected so shooting up that that um, flower as well shows them all. Well, this is where it is, where they eat the the roots, they eat the leaves, they eat. You know, they use the leaves for different things as well. So they need to know where they are. And uh, yeah, in that underbrush and all that, it would be very difficult to find sometimes at times. So yeah. 
I just have to press go and off you go. <laughs> I know it's so funny. It's like I've got that talk at Newtown Town Hall for the Fairy Tale Society in two weeks' time, and it's you know um, I know what they asked me to talk about. I was using um, plants in storytelling, and it's just yeah. Someone said to me today, I was like, "What are you actually going to talk about?" And I was like, "Oh, look, I just figured out when I go there because it depends what people ask and what because it's just like I just go plants. What do you want to know? <laughs> That's it. That's, right. That's it. That's so right. yeah. yeah, but I'm happy to. If there's any other questions as well, so about plants, flowers. You can shoot them at me. <laughs> um, I, I haven't got any more. Um, mm -hmm. I've sort of um, exhausted my two questions, I think. <laughs> okay. That's good. So we'll just give it because there's always a little bit of a lag between asking a question and receiving um, an answer. Um, uh, I just wondered too, because with your herb oracle and then with the Greenwich oracle and, of course, now with the language of flowers, um, because we're we're a country of, well, we're a nation. Oh gosh, even that's loaded too. Okay, we're a country, nation, uh, continent of immigrants as well as people who've lived here forever. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of overlap of um, plants um, that have been brought here from all continents across the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really have. It was just comment. I think, I think I'm just making. Yeah, a comment. yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So yeah. um, maybe using them and having them sort of here. I mean, the thing is, I, I think um, what I'm loving at the moment, you just showed those two books as well, is that the community garden I'm working with and even in my own garden, well, that was my first thing is preserving uh, what is locally uh, in, in native Endemic. to this area mm. as well. Yeah, endemic plants, exactly. And we're doing that at Swamp. And then I went and interviewed a uh, community garden group uh, for one of my articles yesterday, mm. San Remo Community Garden. And their great pride and joy is their bush tucker garden as well. Mm. So there is this very um it's been like this i think up and down but there is this move towards that uh the endemic plants around you as well uh we still a lot of our diet is based on the european uh, plants as well from other places and let's face it most of us are european as well i think growing them sensibly and also uh with care as well i mean that's just where we are now it, that's that's mm -hmm. a thing using them as well i guess we ha we are of that heritage but mm -hmm. you know it goes back to that and do no harm and i don't even mean that in a um a uh, magical sort of way i just think that that's a way to live is just you know uh, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a pagan, whether whatever, is just do no harm. So as long as the plant isn't doing any harm, that's the thing. I have great conversations about uh, beekeeping and native bees. It's just, you know, and, and people are always surprised, and, and I know you're one of them, that I don't keep honeybees and uh, I have a huge passion for native bees. I understand the commercial aspects of the honey industry, so that is something that's here. I understand that it's preferable to use honey than uh, than than sugars and and different things like that and i understand that um native bees don't supply as great a uh, amount of honey but i think and i well i don't even think i know that honey bees you know in urban settings you know i native bees to me are better you know to have because yeah. we need to to look after that so that's that's one aspect and it's and i'm not bringing the cane out to people that are do that that's great okay. we do need beans as well honey bees honey beans honey bees as well i get that you know but uh there needs to be a bit of a balance as well and also you know it's okay to change your thinking you know i'm not one of these mm. people who goes that's it you're just growing all this stuff and you're doing that i mean that is so unhelpful it's just about education and and um example as well that's how i feel i do things by example mm. not by preaching never have mm. never will so mm. um but yeah, with our plants and that is just like try to 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 get yourself. Look, well, here's a perfect example. Me love Tahitian limes. Love them. Grew them in Sydney. Not a problem. Came here. Just went. The first thing I did was like, and now I'm going to put my veggie garden in and put my Tahitian lime in. Citrus doesn't grow very well on the central coast at all. 
okay it's the greatest thing and it and it curled up and pretty much died and i transplanted it <laughs> and, you know i just had this duh moment you know it was like i was actually eating finger lime because i like them and i was just like you know <laughs> plant a finger line which uh, which i've done you know it's like and i have got a lot of uh you know um i have got a lot of native plants around my garden but it was just you know i just didn't see it at the time i was busy doing things and and i yeah. do have that mix. so but i think um that's the thing and it's just about having a balance and seeing uh, what works and and doing no harm with what what you grow as well and you know like you know don't grow pampas grass i've seen this just it's big in the wedding industry and I have unfortunately seen it be big in the spiritual thing as well. I saw something recently and I was just horrified and I know that that some suppliers, I won't, some suppliers, and, and I'm telling you, there's not many suppliers at all. They'll, they'll say, oh, no, it's irradiated pampas grass. It doesn't have any seeds, you know rubbish it, you know a irradiated pampas grass one thing is so expensive it's ridiculous so i very much doubt that some of the displays i've seen it would cost thousands of dollars to create and uh yeah because one pampas grass thing that fluffy thing is millions of seeds and and uh, you drive around anywhere on the central coast the south coast because it's so popular in weddings there's waterways choked with the stuff so uh, yeah i know what you're talking about now yeah yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, oh, that sort of tail. Yeah, you know, it's everywhere. It's like yeah. someone has it at their bloody weddings, and I have seen it <laughs> magical things as well. So it's about looking at alternatives as well. You know, it's it's about, and it's shifting. As I said, I'm not bringing the cane out on people. It's like sh going, oh, I just heard Cheryl and say that, or I just read it somewhere or something. Okay, I'm going to change the way that I do things. You know, it's uh, that, mm. and, and that's it. you know, I'm, it's not being preachy. It's just like I found that out and. And none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect at all, you know, um, at all. These things, as I said, I was like, where's my Tahitian lime, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just like, oh, you stupid, you know, that thing. And so, yeah, it's just about that sliding scale. And, you know, we're not going to, the thing is, Joe, we're not going to turn around, you and I, or everyone listening to this tomorrow morning and just go, right, I'm getting rid of my potatoes, my spinach, and I'm just going to be eating wild greens, finger limes, and, yeah. and or whatever. We're not going to do it. We no. can add things like that. You know what I mean? Yes. And we can, yeah. But we can not be silly and grow things that are just destructive. Or And we can make better choices when we're choosing foods, getting them from ethical, sustainable uh, places as well. And that's not saying, you know, you have to buy the most expensive of everything. It's small changes. Do what you can. I understand that organic produce can be frightfully expensive, but it's just making better choices of those and just saying no to some other things, you know, um, particularly different process things that come from places that, you know, aren't so good. So, you know, you don't have to be full on vegan buying all the organic. It, it, I mean, it is. It's impossible for a lot of people, especially there's places like you and I live, the socioeconomic uh, levels. Yeah. I mean, there's some very wealthy people around here, but most people, it's, you know, um, very much working class and, yeah. you know, they're not all going to do it. But small changes, small things. And the community gardens, I always smile because they're just the hub of people who yeah. are uh, mostly um, that working class people, all types of people really, but a lot of them are, and it's like that's their opportunity to grow things like that in a sustainable yeah. way yeah. and to um, afford uh, organic produce and and, uh, and also be part of uh, something that an educational sort of thing for, for the future as well. So it's small steps yeah. and it's um, it's just being a part of that. But, yeah, there's, there's no... As I say, you can't, um, um, yeah, there's no perfect gurus of anything. <laughs> no, absolutely no. not. We've got a no. couple of last minute questions too, Cheryl. No, that's fine. You're <laughs> okay, good. so Doc Shine says the spells you have put so much attention, love, and time into really shows in not just the guidebooks with the oracle cards, but also your spell books. Are, oh. spells, are spells and rituals something that you do as part of your daily life? Yes, 
And here's the thing, you might notice in my spell books and in the Greenwich Oracle, their spells as well. Um, my spells, <laughs> my spells are all very simple sort of things. It's kind of like making a bath bomb or making a type of tea or, you know, and doing it with intention. That's how it is. And with intention, yep. it's, it's about thinking about what I'm doing. It's about being in the moment as well so my spells and even my spell book and uh, they're not these great you know um things and even the rituals are very everyday everyday kind of things so to me spells and rituals are just connecting with the energy of the plants that i'm using the outcomes that i want and being in that moment with dedication and focus that's it so uh, yeah i do absolutely absolutely it's just taking that bit of time that's it but i don't i don't follow a tradition mm. and i don't um yeah not at all that i'm just you know i don't know <laughs> i'm just me plant person a plant person. person yeah yeah good just i'm a gardener <laughs> people you know, they go, <laughs> they go, you know what i am i'm a gardener <laughs> so, that's it <laughs> yeah yeah um sherry asks uh, can you Oh, could you bring out a permaculture book on bad pests and good pests? Yeah, <laughs> I could, but there's a lot written as well. <laughs> bad pests and good pests. Um, I'm looking over here, I'm looking at books over here because I've got bookshelves all around me of sorts of things. Um, it's not on my radar at the moment, but there's a lot of things that are out there at the moment. Sherry, if you're in Australia, the best, I'll just show you, it's one of, it's a yep, text. She's up the road from us. So, yep, she's nearby. Oh, so yeah. one is... Um, Oh, yeah. really serious, serious. This is um, it's a textbook, and I know anyone who's, who's done horticulture like me is. There we go. There we go. Oh, just yep. Garden pest yeah. diseases and good bugs. Mm. Yeah, that's that's and, actually and lift it up a little bit so we can. Ah, Dennis Crawford. There you go, Sherry. <laughs> but this is actually it's actually a textbook. It's um, if you do your diploma of horticulture, it's a textbook. But it's also it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant book. It's it's Australian. It's you know, it's an Australian textbook. Um, yeah, Joe could probably get it in for you if you wanted it. But it's you know, <laughs> I think I need to write the book. It's already out. So it, it, when you say a permaculture one as well, look, permaculture is a practice. Um, mm. They would base a lot of the stuff on what's in that book there as well so permaculture is about sustainability and it's a uh it's a it's a, a way of gardening it's a way of living as well that's based very much on sustainability um you know i use a lot of permaculture practices and it most of them i've sort of found that oh yeah i do that <laughs> that kind of thing and i think a lot yeah. of gardeners will find that themselves i i more call myself an organic gardener and uh yeah that's the thing. So, yeah, it's okay, Sherry. That's okay. And one last que question from Rachel. She says, mm -hmm. um, in your language of flowers, Oracle, do you speak from an ethnobotanical point of view? And I Absolutely. Think even I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes. every, all the work that I do, um, Rachel, yeah. everything, all, everything is an ethnobotanical point of view. So in the actual little... Um, I've been picking up books and paintings and putting them everywhere. So in the actual little guidebook, you've got, um, yeah, I've, I've got a little bit about the plant from an ethnobotanical point of view, the um, gardening, a, a bit of gardening sort of in there, a, a little bit about the place as well. So that was a good thing. So you sort of made me forget about that, <laughs> that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, a little bit I've got, what do I call it? Oh, the place, just place there you go i did that and, uh, yeah but it's definitely like all that's all my work is from that point of view it's all yeah, yeah. so the relationship between people and plants really isn't it ethnobotany yeah. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what it is in and all the way yeah the relationship between the two and how we uh use plants in our um everyday life and how like all all humans throughout history have that's what it's about and it's yeah, spiritually culturally culinary medicinally um creatively everything but also how plants use us 
Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. Now a really good book. I I love to. I'm always telling people about books. And now, now his name's Michael. <laughs> That's his a name's, good thing. <laughs> his name's Michael Pollan. Like he really yeah. is. Okay, the Botany of Desire, a fantastic book. And there's a PBS American PBS special. Uh, I believe you can see it all on YouTube called The Botany of Desire, and it's exactly what it's about. It's about how plants have evolved to um, attract us. So so we help them uh, spread throughout the world. Take over the world. Um, hang on. Let me have a look. It does distract me from my study. <laughs> yeah, the guidebooks, yeah. <laughs> they do. They do a little bit. You can read my guidebooks. That's what I'm always saying. Well, Sharice just sent me, she's a friend who lives up the road here, and she sent me a photo of her, her she was gifted your deck. And she oh. has a photo of your deck on her study table next to her laptop. Um, she's studying oh, online. Really? So she says she sits there and she shuffles away while she's watching online. <laughs> then it goes, oh, crap, I need to take the notes on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that has been quite a distraction, I'm sure. But, hey, it's a pretty distraction. <laughs> Pretty one, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty. And yeah. I have ones that aren't. Someone did ask me as well, so. are they all just pretty flowers? And, you know, no, no, no yeah. I have that big, oh, oh, oh isn't that great it's the largest flower in the world and it oh, smells wow. like it smells like rotten at the corpse but it smells like um complete and or raffalacia it's like a corpse flower it's um in indonesia and it smells like rotten um meat and it's quite disgusting it's over a meter lot of wide this, wow. this flower. how it's do you amazing. say that because that one might might raffalacia. be one that i had um raffalacia 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 Okay. It's like a corpse. Yes. It's a type of corpse flower. So, yeah, so we'll it's just really call it corpse flower. <laughs> that's why we have that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. People will say that to me. They'll just go, what is, you know, and, and I'll be like, well, hang on, you know, <laughs> or they give you like a blurry picture. But I, a fascinating thing I learned when I was studying botany was that um, the teacher that I had, she said, you know, like even, you know, botanists with, decades of experience behind them sometimes they can't identify a, a plant because even if it's next to another one that looks the same they can be two different ones unless I take a DNA test of it and I was like whoa mm. this would never be, be feeling bad if you're stumped with something because you know sometimes that's what happens and they hybridize and they do all sorts of things so um yeah I mean generally you know you get to know all your plants and things but yeah, you can be. And that's that's the thing about and Latin names change all the time. In fact, I think it's quite funny that um what book was it? Oh, Flowerpedia that I wrote. I've yeah. had a few people that, you know, um, some Karen's <laughs> that, oh, that was a huge um, that was a huge I shouldn't say that. One of my best friends no, is Karen. Exactly. Let's leave that. She's not I a Karen. She's no. not a Karen. I know she hates it too. I'm like, she, she might be watching. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> anyway she um anyway yeah i've had a couple of those going you've used the old botanical name and i'm like yeah i know um <laughs> so botanical names change all the time like they'll change they'll go you're in this family or this species oh no sorry we're going to put you over there because some botanist found something and reclassified yes. and all that yes. so i mean it does happen and um and yeah i've actually been guilty i think in flower pity there's a couple in there that that I probably should have known better and and because they had changed and all that sort of thing but it's Second it's a massive, you, can fix oh, that, you know I, I don't really worry about those things because it's a massive subject and i mean mm. it's all i study it's all i do um i'm not some great professor or anything like that but you know everybody yeah it, it's just it's incredibly wide and deep and you make mistakes it's like you know it's life you know as i said it's like not the superhuman goddess of anything <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks doc i'm glad you had a good time that's great and, and karen said the same thing which was what doc was um, Hi, with, so <laughs> it was great fun and informative so yeah i'm sorry, karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> we've got to find some weird name like no Although, like, we don't need to have a name at all it's i no, think no. we need to forget it all and just you know <laughs> Just move on from that. I, so. I, get, I get a lot of picky people. And when I heard that, too, I was like, yeah, I know we need to move on from it. I'm just, because I do, I do go, oh, for goodness sake, come on, be nicer to each other. No, I just have a thing of like, just yeah, err on the side of, of kindness. Like that's kindness. I mean. It's right. It doesn't cost kindness. anything. Yeah. <laughs> if you have to be something, be kind. There we go. That's a nice note to end on, isn't it? 
Isn't that lovely? Isn't that great? Okay. I'm not, no, no. <laughs> I want to, no. I want to finish too. Oh, I nearly said what sort of plants they were. I, I nearly said it. And you know what? You can all put, you know, there's only one other person in the world that outside my immediate family that knows what the next deck is, and that's Joe. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh look, I told you, it. don't mention it. Oh, because I'm doing my best to forget about it. <laughs> so like, oh, oh, I'm like, I've got to go and finish my next two. And then I was just like, so I was like, don't say it. But uh, no, that's you've it. Got I know. To do. I tell you what, I do know. I can tell you when it's coming out. It's coming out. I can't say the actual. I nearly said the date. I was like, no, it's coming out at the beginning of next year. So, okay, but as good. long as I get a crack on tonight, yeah, and, that's it. So we, yeah. we need to wind up. Yes, yeah, that's oh. right, Sherry. We're going to wind it up. <laughs> so you can have another cup of coffee and no, uh, get to finish. Oh gosh. Oh, wonderful. Well, thanks, Natalie. Thanks, Doc, Sherry, and Karen, and. Um, um, Gosh, gosh, I don't need to roll up, but I should. Cherie, I had my picture in my head and everybody who's come along and stayed. It's been um, a really enjoyable week, yeah. um, evening. I've been looking forward to it for yeah. a couple of weeks. So I'm glad that you've been able to make some time so that we can do this. Um, and Kelly as well, yeah, you're welcome. So and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a plug because I want everyone to know, and I know you'll put this up as well, there's only one place <laughs> in the whole wide world that you can... <laughs> mind decks and signed books and that's from avalon by nature that's where um i don't sell things myself because i just don't have the time anymore i just don't so joe um lives near me that's fantastic and i love her store she supports me and i can actually pop up the road and sign things so it's the only boy place if you want a signed copy of anything gorgeous avalon by nature with joe that's it that's a great point so if any of you um do have any of uh, uh, don't have any of Sherilyn's titles because it looks like we're all fans and we've all got all of your titles. <laughs> yeah. But if there are any outstanding, <laughs> I do have um, in my shop, in my online shop, um, it's up to date. So yep. if you do want to put an order in, just put in the little comment section, please, can Sherilyn sign it for me? Awesome. And uh, um, I, that'll just take us a little couple of extra days to organise yep. that. <laughs> Because I'm running, we're running in different directions, but it yeah, can be easy, easily yeah. organised, literally different directions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that can be organised because, uh, you mm. know, those sorts of things are, are just really personal and it just makes that yeah. that um, book purchase more personal for you and mm. also for the author as well to know that it's going somewhere really special. It's <laughs> true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, I don't want to stop, but um, we do. I'm going to go home and have dinner. <laughs> and right. um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for um, sharing your flower knowledges with us. And mm -hmm. thank you, everybody, for coming along and joining in with us tonight. It's mm -hmm. been really lovely. The questions have been really interesting and thoughtful. Yeah. And um, we just love that you love um, Sherilyn's work as much as I do. And yeah. Um, it's just, you know, in our little corner here, just have a bit of um, uh, flower time together. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. And thanks for having me, Jo. And thanks, My everybody, pleasure. for popping in. It's, it means a lot to share a bit of um, personal time with you. It's great. Thank you. Beautiful. All righty. Well, good night, everyone. And uh, we'll see you another time. <laughs>